This conference will now be recorded. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in, in the world. First, let me excuse that um, there was a broken link in one of the newsletters. We tried to um, repair that one. It worked when we started um, to check it, but um, it doesn't seem to work for everybody. There were a few people who could join via this link, a few people not. Um, we sent out a new newsletter, which um, was uh, arriving at uh, all of the newsletter recipients a um, few minutes ago. Uh, that was on an urgency case, and I'm very sorry that it seems not to have worked. As you can see, this um, session where we would like to present the rules is or the rules changes is recorded. It will be. Uh, the next days on the ISTA YouTube channel, and we will um, send the information out as soon as it is available there. The uh, house rules are that you could open your camera when you want to talk, and uh, we will let you in, or open your mic when you want to talk. If you don't want to talk, please close your mic, and then we see that um, you are not uh, um, wanting to talk before that starts i will will close all mics anyway so we are all on on zero um steve you want to give a few words of um welcome as president of vista thank you andreas um so for for those who joined us earlier um uh, 20 20 minutes ago or so um we had a few problems uh, with the link that went out in the newsletter so we've just sent a new newsletter link to everybody um, as people join we are getting some feedback but uh, when the session starts so if you could um, put turn your mics off that would be great but as the session starts andreas will mute everybody but then we'll open up the mics at a later stage. Uh, so just for kind of a housekeeping point of view, like Andreas said, um, if we keep our cameras off and, until we're talking or, or wanting to uh, talk or raise a question. Uh, Ernest, um, thank you very much for uh, running this, this virtual session. I think during the COVID years, we, we've experienced quite a few different changes. And one of those is the idea of presenting a webinar um, in advance of the ordinary general meeting. This year's ordinary general meeting um, will be physical one in Cairo. So um, I don't know, Ernest, if you're going to have a session or in your session you remind people about the voting. But for some people where they've only experienced virtual voting, the voting on the rules session is only at the physical meeting in Cairo. So please remember to register to, to vote. That's the designated members um, that are going to be there. And if, and if for some reason a designated member can't be there, maybe they can uh, work out that the voting member for that year is transferred to another designated member. And if you're not sure about the process of registration to vote and, and the voting process, please uh, contact and, and Andreas at the Secretariat and here help you with that. So with those with that introduction, it's really over to you, Ernest, and thank you very much for doing this and providing this session to the membership. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, Ernest, if you want to share your screen. Okay. Uh, right. We'll make you presenter. And um, now you should be able to do so. All right. And um, as I said, house rules would be if you have questions or anything else, uh, just open your camera or your microphone and we will um, we will let you in. Andreas, we didn't have a chance to go over this earlier. Can you see my screen well Perfectly. in terms of reading? Yes. Great. And as another rule, there is on your on your screen, which you see, there's a plus and minus 
on probably on the right hand side where you can enlarge things or reduce the size of the uh, of what you see online. Great. And give me one second, everyone, and I'll get this thing going. All right. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, again, apologize for the delay. Uh, we'll try to make this presentation as uh, as concise as possible um, while still making sure that you get the information you need to be able to make a, an informed choice um, for your voting. Uh, so as always, I would like to thank everyone who participated in helping the Rules Committee to prepare these proposals. Uh, special thanks go out to Sue Alvarez, my vice chair, uh, Ignacio, our, our ECOM liaison, Andreas and his team at the Secretariat. Uh, and of course, uh, the committee chairs and vice chairs and their team and all the work that they put in to get these proposals uh, here to us today. This year, uh, the Rules Committee submits six editorial corrections and 12 rule change proposals. Uh, the plan today is to allow uh, time for a brief discussion on each of the proposals. Um, what I'll do is I'll summarize the gray box, uh, then scroll through each proposal at a relatively brief pace, since everyone should have already had an opportunity uh, to study the proposals. If you have not had an opportunity to review them, please go ahead and open them up, uh, get your hard copy or open, open up the proposals on your screen so that you can read the proposals in detail as we go, go through. Again, you will not have an opportunity to view them in detail as I stroll through because I'm going to go uh, pretty fast. After each proposal, I'll give a few seconds for anyone with comments to type them into the chat box. Um, afterwards, either me or, or maybe Andreas um, will read the comments and if necessary, request that the chair or vice chair of the submitting TCOM respond. Um, if you are chair uh, or vice chair uh, representing your TCOM, please be ready to respond to any comments when your chapter comes up or when your rule proposal comes up. Um, it's possible uh, that some comments may require the TCOMs to meet to discuss the issue uh, before an answer can be given. So after this meeting, um, the technical committees will have an opportunity to consider the comments and make updates at if needed to their proposals, uh, I'll probably give them about seven days. Um, at that point, I'll take those um, updates uh, from them uh, and ask the Secretariat to publish them on the ISTA website several days before the ordinary general meeting so that you'll have an opportunity to see any revisions and responses to the issues that were not settled here today. In, in addition to the in, to publishing the updates, I will mention those changes at the OGM uh, prior to the vote. Uh, during the OGM, uh, new comments will not be considered. That is what today is for. Uh, so successful proposals at that point will be uh, effective on January 1st of um, 2023. So as I start to review the proposals, uh, please remember that anything crossed out in red or inserted in blue or original edits published two months prior to the OGM. Any changes in green, and I don't think there are many uh, in this edition, uh, or editorial corrections that have been put in since publication at that time. So I'll start with the editorial uh, corrections. The first editorial correction, uh, this proposal clarifies the reporting authorities when determining the scientific names for pure and other seeds reported on ISTA certificates. The proposal also harmonizes the reporting between 3.7 and 4.7. The proposal is in response to an ISTA member's inquiry, and it was developed by the Purity TCOM uh, and uh, approved by unanimous vote within the TCOM. So I did receive a comment um, about this with with this about this proposal. And give me a second. And I'm 
unable to select my other screen because I'm sharing, but um, the comment read, uh, in addition to every other, in the addition of every other species, let me get to that for you. Okay, there. Uh, the addition of every other species may be misleading to non-native English speakers. For example, if in a barley sample, three seeds of other species are found, let's say A, B, and C, uh, we suppose the edit, we suppose that the edit intends for each species to be reported, not every other species, A and C. Um, this comment was for the purity committee. Uh, so if anyone on the purity committee um, would like to respond to that, and I'll read that again because you can't read it on my screen. As a matter of fact, let me, there you are. Actually, actually here it is here. Um, again, the comment was, uh, in addition, uh, the addition of every other species may be misleading to non-native English speakers. For example, if in a barley sample, three seeds of other species are found, A, B, and C, we suppose the edit intends for each species to be reported, not every other species, A and C. Um, would the purity committee chair or vice chair like to respond to this uh, comment? Jane, Andrea, are you in? Okay, so what I'll do is um, I will get a response from the purity uh, chair or vice chair or that committee, and I will um, uh, add that to this document. This document will be published on the ISTA website uh, several days ahead of the OGM, so everyone will have an opportunity to see what the purity com committee uh, committee's response was uh, to this general comment. It is not a, give me one second. So unfortunately, it's not gonna allow me to switch back and forth between my two documents. So I'm gonna just stay on the rules proposal document and I'll have to read all of the comments uh, to you. The next uh, editorial correction, uh, well, actually, um, the next editorial corrections are below. They're all going to be in gray boxes. Again, since you guys should have already seen them all already, I'll go ahead and scroll through those because we may have additional comments later uh, in which we want to spend our time on. If I may make a, a suggestion on uh, this is Eddie speaking on, on uh, that. Um, a comment uh, on the previous proposal, the every other species, I would I agree with uh, with that comment. Uh, so I would propose that they change it to uh, the seeds of all other species. Okay, I'll type this in green. Yes. Of, of all other species. Yeah, or seeds of all the other species. I think that would uh, make it uh, clearer. Uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, if there's nobody from the, uh, else on the purity committee. All right. Again, um, um, since the purity committee is not hasn't responded I'll, I'll make this as a temporary change now and um, uh, again this the final their final decision will be on this uh, final document that will be published uh, in about two weeks yeah but for all of us it looks like um, clarification of what should be said here exactly yeah. all right 
if anyone has any um, comments that you've already come up with for any of these proposals uh, dealing with editorial changes, go ahead and start typing those into the comments boxes. Um, and, uh, and I'll go back to those uh, once we get to the end of the document. Okay, I see we have two comments. Let me read those. Okay. And that was a, a comment that, um, there was a comment that just mentioned exactly what we changed the, the original to, so all other species. Okay, moving on to part B, uh, there was no additional new species added to table 2C this year. Uh, there has been, there was no changes to the ISTA stabilized list this year. There will be a process update though that you need to be aware of. Uh, to ensure harmonization between the stabilized list and chapters within the rules, any species added to the chapter, to add it to chapter tables, will be added to the stabilized list concurrently. So that's just so that the, the, the list doesn't um, say something different from uh, what the current table says. Uh, this was approved, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by the ECOM. Uh, and this was a, um, in addition given to me by the nomenclature chair. Okay, starting with C 1.1, adding e-certificates to the ISTA rules. Uh, ISTA will begin offering optional electronic seed analysis certificates in 2023. The electronic certificates will be available for use by accredited la member laboratories of ISTA. The addition of electronic certificates will require edits to chapter one, and these edits uh, were made by the rules committee in, in consultation with the secretariat. And what these edit did basically is just make sure that uh, the rules um, kind of showed how papers, uh, the electronic certificates would work, um, um, would work in in uh, in the rules. Uh, it made we tried to make changes that made them equivalent to what the paper is already doing, so there shouldn't be any differences or any uh, there shouldn't be any differences in the paper or the electronic certificates. There was a comment in uh, regarding 1.4.1 1. uh, that we add uh, ISTA e-certificates here in this sentence um, just to make it more clear. Uh, I agree with that, so I put it in uh, in this uh, in this section, and you can see it there in green. And I'll give just a couple of seconds in case anyone wants to come in on, on that first proposal. Ernest, um, may I speak? Uh, Axel. Is, uh, hey, Axel, speaking. sure. Uh, could you go yes, uh, one side uh, previous? 
uh, the previous slide when, when you say the e-certificate uh, to be consistent uh, with a sentence before uh, a little bit more lower then uh, you say paper is the certificates and then is the e-certificates so should it be is the paper certificates and is the e-certificates so I'm not sure where you are, Axel. Let me when, when uh, you here or in, uh, in the same. Uh, it's it's yeah, just I, I, I see what you mean, Axel. It says now of, paper ISTA certificates, and you want to change into ISTA paper certificates, right? Ah, uh, here. Yes. Yeah. It's the paper. So the paper is a second word in that case, Ernest. Okay. This would Which be consistent. Makes sense with the with the below one. Yes. It's not changing what we what we really have here, but it's uh, it's uh, getting consistent. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Axel. Okay. You're Thank welcome. you, Axel. Yes. All right. If there are no further comments, I'll move to the next proposal. Removing the restriction uh, to issue um, only dust like, I'm sorry, removing the restriction to only issue dust like species test results on a BIC, a C.1.2. Uh, this proposal removes the restriction that other C determination tests for dust like species can only be issued on a blue international C sample certificate. The restriction was based on previous discussions between the bulking sampling committee and the purity technical committees on whether a modified ISTA sampling methodology was needed when sampling for dust light seed species in seed lots. Um, more recent discussions have concluded that the sampling methodolo methodology does not need to be modified. Therefore, testing results for dust like species can be reported on either the orange international seed lot certificates or the blue international seed um, sample certificates. I have not received any comments on, actually I have received a comment on this proposal. Uh, the comment was, is there any document available that was the basis for the new conclusion of more re recent discussions. What is now available that was not available in previous discussions? Will the ECOM please explain why this proposal does not need a validation study? So again, I'll read that again. Uh, there is, a, is there any document available that was the basis for the new conclusion of the more recent discussions? What is now available that was not available in previous discussions? And will the ECOM please explain why this proposal does not need a validation study? Um, and anyone from the ECOM Purity or Booking Sampling Committee, if you guys have a, um, a response to that, that would be great. Hi, Ernest. Uh, Steve here. So. Um... Uh, Eddie, uh, I wondered if you wanted to comment and then I could add further comment. But I mean, my understanding and background is that we, this was discussed within the Balkan and Sampling Committee and looked to see um, if the existing methodology for, for sampling of seed lots uh, would, would give the proper sampling methodology to detect dust light seed. There was concern in the past that you'd have to have a targeted sampling, but I think there was further discussion with the embalking and sampling. So therefore the, the feeling was that although in the past we'd been very careful about saying wh whether the normal ISTA sampling would represent the seed lot in a true way, um, this, this was further discussed in the committee and therefore the idea was that no, there wasn't a problem and it was also more of a problem for people to have purity results reported both on orange and blue certificates um, for the same seed lot. So, um, but I, if you'd like to add anything to that, Eddie? Okay. 
<laughs> well, I can try. Uh, I don't know what there is to validate, you know. Um, so um, if you do validation studies, uh, are you going to add a million uh, or, uh, or a bunch of to a bag and, and check with uh, yourself uh, to a 60,000 uh, kernel maize bag and see if you get uh, the percentage uh, wise? Uh, <clears throat> there, there's no logical way uh, how this validation could be done. So uh, when we discussed it, uh, uh, this type of dust-like seeds, if there's any seed in a bag, usually there's a lot uh, of those uh, dust-like species, and uh, you should uh, uh, get uh, of those seeds in your sample uh, that you take. So you don't have to go specifically to the corner of the bag uh, we presumably all the small seeds have drifted down to. Uh, but it has been proven that uh, if there's seed um, of those dust like species in uh, uh, other seeds, you will find it. Uh, so uh, the purpose of uh, the test for these species is not uh, a percentage or uh, the number of seeds uh, it's whether it's there or not. It's more a phytosanitary issue actually than a quality issue. So if you find one of those uh, prohibited uh, or parasitic uh, weed seeds, uh, then it would be enough uh, for a country not to uh, accept that seed lot. So if you re whether you report one strich or one, one or a bunch or 10,000 uh, on your um, uh, orange or blue certificate, uh, uh, the country that's importing the seed would still not uh, accept it if they have such uh, restrictions. So that is basically uh, uh, our argument uh, in this uh, regard. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, and what I will do is after this meeting, um, um, I'll, um, because that was obviously too much for everyone to remember or write down, uh, I'll, I'll get the, um, the ECOM and the Booking and Sampling Committee to add that to this comments document. Uh, Sylvie, uh, your microphone I, is also open. Yes, because uh, I would like to, to have some comments from the, my colleagues in Jeves about this proposal. Do, do you hear me correctly? Yes? No problem. Yes, yes. fine. Okay. okay, so we had uh, the, the same concern as uh, the previous one about the re representativity of uh, Orobanki seeds uh, in a sample taken uh, about uh, from um, a global um, seed lot uh, in order to to issue uh, an orange certificate. So it was the same question, the, the first question as we, we had already uh, discussed about. Uh, the second one is um, is the, the fact that uh, at the moment uh, it is not possible to to do a test when the the, the seed sample is treated, the seed lot is treated, and it uh, it's a major concern when you want to uh, to issue um, an orange certificate. Usually the the seeds are treated, and at that time it's it's not possible to 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 test. Or, uh, the, the presence of orobanki seeds when seeds are treated. So it's uh, it's it's very. I don't know how can we do with this kind of um, uh, new proposal. How can we we perform the test? And uh, I think that's all. Yes. Yes. Katie uh, um, I, I think yes. Uh, it, it, it also raises a question of the traceability because if you want to uh, to do this test, you have to do it on untreated seed. So it means that you have to to, to do it on, on, a, on a previous sample um, sampled before the treatment, and then as seeds are treated, the lot is changed. The lot the lot number is changed. 
So, and then you issue the orange certificate on different lot numbers. So, I, I, we, we really don't understand how we can really make the link between the two analyses. Plus, uh, as uh, Sylvie mentioned already, the, uh, uh, we, we understand that it's only a presence absence what countries need. But uh, uh, even if it's just a presence absence, we still have some questions about the representativity of the sampling for this analysis to be uh, uh, eligible to an orange certificate. So, Ernest, if I can just uh, re respond to that, is that at the moment you have the same problem with any test you do for purity and other seed determinations on treated seed. So that, that's also why um, many places will test um, the, the, the sample before treatment for purity and other seed determinations and then do another uh, test on the treated seed for germination. And in some countries, they would be able to maintain the original seed lot identification uh, number, in other countries not. So you may have to include both numbers to be linked, or you have to issue an orange for the purity and other seed determinations on the untreated seed and a separate orange um, for, the, for the germination result. So I don't think... The, the fact that you're doing Orobanchi testing is any different to any other testing on purity and other seed determinations for treated or untreated seed. So that problem is still there. And I agree, uh, um, Sylvie and Clotilde, that, that that's a very um, difficult problem for people to solve, but I think it has to be solved from another way. The, the other thing with this methodology here is there are two methods for Orobanchi testing, both washing method and the dry sieving method and you would need a separate sample if you were going to use the wet washing method um, because you, you you would wash off the treatment and you would again have to be deal with the sample where you've washed it and can't use it for germination so you may have to use separate things but to me those aren't arguments to prevent having the Orobanchi test on an orange the idea about is it representative sampling? Yeah, that's one that I think Eddie's tried to answer. Um, in some countries, they've been using ISTA sampling now uh, to detect Orobanchi in seed lots, and they have been finding it. So, so in those situations, it would seem that just practically the ISTA methodology for sampling is working. And if you don't use the ISTA method, Already, what methodology are you going to use? So, and if and if countries are using the methodology specifically that finds Orobanchi better, that would be something useful to feed back to the Balkan and sampling. But for sure, labs using um, current ISTA sampling of bulk seed lots have been able to to detect Orobanchi. I don't know if that helps uh, Sylvie and colleagues, but that that's some information. Can I add oh, something? Yes. Do you hear me? Valerie oh, and, okay. Valerie and then solved, working. Yeah, yes. I've solved my uh, microphone issue. Um, you were speaking about uh, phytosanitary uh, issue, and if it's a phytosanitary thing, uh, generally for seed health, what we have is a minimum sample size because it's linked to uh, the epidemiology of the pest, and in this case, uh, weeds are pests. And uh, so the minimum sample size is something where you know that if you detect one in it, it will cause a, di a disease or a problem in the field. So for me, I think it's important to have some minimum something mm. and not just let it open to, to whatever number can be tested without no, doing the incidence uh, in the field. So the so the, um, so the minimum sampling size will will be linked to the other seed determinations quantity in Table Two C, Valerie. Yeah. So that yeah, so that's already that's that's already based on twenty five thousand seeds. So 
So that that's ba that, so that quantity in Table Two C is 25,000 seeds. For large seeded uh, species, that will be limited to one kilogram, so it will be less than 25,000. But there is a minimum sampling weight already established for weed seeds in general for for purity um, from Table Two C. So the same principles apply for weed seeds as Orobanchi. So there is a minimum sampling size. Okay. Okay, so it's my turn. Okay. Um, I just want to clarify um, the method uh, to test dust like seeds should be on untreated seed lots. The intention is for untreated seed lots. So the method uh, is the rule provided only apply for untreated seeds. Um, so um, I don't think treated seeds you can perform uh, dust-like seeds at this point unless they have other method. So current two method, either dry method or wet method only can be used for treated seed lots. So that is one clarification. The other, um, other question related to sampling um, so sampling is to get representative um, uh, sample from seed lot. Uh, it's not validate for each different kind of species. We didn't do, Easter rule didn't do validation for every other species. For example, large seeded weeds or small seeded weeds or dust like weeds. Um, I think uh, that is the best available method for sampling a uh, seed lot currently is the rule has, so which should apply to, in principle, to most of the species, including dust-like. So I don't think we have approach to validate every single species uh, to test a representative for detect that particular species. So that's what I want to make it clear. The method of, if method uh, follow principle of sampling of ISTA, it should uh, apply to dust-like species. So I just want to add two. We haven't, ISTA hasn't do um, validation based on individual species. Um, so I hope that helps a uh, previous question. That's all from me. Thank you, Regine. Uh, there was one additional comment, and then we'll need to move forward so that we can ensure we get through everything in the um, uh, in the allotted time. Uh, David Johnson, uh, would you like to uh, to come on and 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 let everyone know your question, or uh, was sure. your question answered? Yeah, sure. Um, what may be a possibility if if people are requesting for some kind of validation is you could find some particles, you know, non-seed particles that are similar in size to the dust-like uh, weed species we're discussing and maybe even stain those a very uh, contrasting color and then just take, you know, a certain, certain volume of seed, however many kilos, and mix those within it trying to mimic a contamination. But, um, then you could maybe try a validation study on sampling, but that's just an idea of, of trying to, you don't necessarily have to use the species that you're talking about. You just need to mimic their characteristics maybe to, uh, to try to do that. But m I'm not real familiar with these species, but my understanding is some of these adhere to uh, the seed. They're not really loose in the, in the, um, in the seed lot itself. They may adhere to other seeds. So, you know that would that would probably take a, a nice study if you had a student that was needing to have a research project this would be a great one to pass along but try to mimic um, the characteristics and the attributes of these dust-like species and and contaminate you know some seed that's typically tested for dust-like weedy species and then see how these results would come out using the current sampling um, sampling protocols but but I agree with like Rojing and the others have said that um, we didn't validate the sampling protocols for any of the other uh, contaminating species in 
to come up with the procedure. So I, I'm not, that's why I would support this moving forward as being allowed to happen, but that's just some comments. Thank you. Well, for um, I, I think, uh, yeah, that is a good idea. When I saw previous, um, some video uh, from other colleagues, they did a sampling, they, they did uh, mimic seeds, they put different size of particles with different color than to say the evenness uh, of the representative. However, dusk-like seeds is less than 0 0.5 uh, millimeter, but we also have ways 0 0.8, 1.0. Uh, have we, um, so I, I don't think current uh, approach uh, sampling um, is based on individual species, is based on um, it's a sample representing that lots and uh, with assumption uh, species are evenly distributed. And I, I feel the small seed because the statics, um, they are attempt to adhere to other seeds. Um, so it's not necessarily a unique uh, situation compared to other weeds. So they all have a potential not evenly distributed. Um, so that is a whole principle of sampling, my understanding. <laughs> Assume um, uh, one seed are well mixed uh, during the process of sampling, um, it should be representative. Um, so I, in a summary, I think this uh, allow, because we have a method, so this is allow um, to do this test on the orange certificate. Uh, whether it's a best, I think it's a most available method allow people to do this testing. Uh, every method have limitation and no exception for, for this uh, situation. But I think it's a best available method allowed to perform this test and method is available for testing and sampling and uh, it should allow to report on the certificate um, yeah so that's my response thank you raising all right so moving to the next uh, proposal michael is um also asking for the well, work, microphone, microphone, but I, I, I don't want to extend the discussion any further, but I made the written comment uh, that, that you, Ernest, read in the beginning. Although I'm a member of the Balkan uh, Sampling Committee, I know, uh, but the question goes back to lecture. So I uh, present the ISTA rules, of course, in our lectures to master students and tell them how we improve them with annual uh, proposals and that everything should be technically sound and we should have some evidence for this. And then we came uh, across this uh, proposal and the gray box that illustrates the, the reason or the background of that uh, proposal. And then the students asked me, well, it said there were um, uh, previous discussions and you had some concern. And now we had uh, recent discussions and obviously no concerns anymore. So what changed during the time? And uh, when I told them everything is based on scientific evidence, they asked me, where is the evidence for that proposal that is uh, um, solving the, the concerns that you had in the past? And there I was standing there and said, I, I don't know. Uh, so this, this was the motivation of the reason. So I'm, I'm not an expert for, for Orobantia and all the other species. It goes only back to what is the basis of uh, a change in the position of a discussion over time and uh, how do we document that reason in a gray box that is um, yeah, supporting the proposal? That was the, the background. Yes, and unfortunately, you can only put so much in the gray box. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, we, we have to, that's what we have open rules committee discussion for like this so that we can get a better understanding. Uh, yeah. Again, um, a lot of the points I, I, I feel were really good points that Regine made and, and all the others. So um, they, they will be uh, in the comments document uh, for people to um, to be able to review. Um, 
uh, after this meeting. All right. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. So moving to the next uh, proposal. Um, C.3.1, additional guidance on reporting results. Uh, the, this proposal is to indicate how other seeds and inert matter found in the second whole sample test shall be reported. The proposal is to pro provide a clear is to provide clear guidance to the second whole sample test, uh, and it was developed and approved by the Purity Committee. Sorry, Ernest, Ignacio. Hey, Ignacio. Uh, can we return to the the previous point uh, in point one five? Two four and four seven proposal. One point. The previous page. Here you talking about this one? Yes, please. Okay. I I, I found this this one. Um, it's only an ed editorial comment. Uh, the text in bold point is. It's similar, but it's not the same. I I think that, in my opinion, that the the text that show point uh, point four point seven is better than the text that show one five two four. The text um... in in because. When can be reported point, this genera must be reported, and this one is not the same than the upper text. It's similar. Yes. Okay. I see what you mean. Um, so you like you like the second you like this better. In uh, my opinion, but I don't know the be... the rules the purity rules, chair. So um, the te I, I the text should be yeah I was going to say the text should be the same Ernest but maybe you could check with uh, Rojing and that afterwards to to make sure which which text they want but you know the the chapter one should reflect chapter four so they should be identical so so um, it would be worth checking with Rojing and others as to which of those texts you want to do I don't know if you have time to do it online now but. That uh, uh, Ignacio is correct. That the the text in both places should be identical. Yes. So raising, uh, raising, so that we can kind of move on to the next proposal. Um, uh, once I give this document to the rules, uh, to, to through to the committees that propose these chairs, if you want to make changes to this, that would be the time to do that based on that comment. Um, and uh, Ignacio, if you don't mind sending me that comment in email so that I can make sure that um that we don't forget about uh forget about it and that it gets uh. Get to the okay, yeah, okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, I think I just uh, read uh, this proposal. I have not received any comments on this proposal, so I give um, uh, I give a couple of seconds uh, for someone to either type it into chat or to open your mic and uh, and, and and make a comment. Sorry, Ernest, I, I have Ignacio, yes. a comment and that it came to me yesterday. Sorry, Ernest, uh, the rest of the rule committee and the, and the ECOM, but it came to me yesterday when I read again this proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a question about this proposal. I don't know if this proposal is against the text that show or it show it in point one point six because I I read the um, the previous rule and I saw that this point three six three it came since several decades ago but I read again the point one six for the fourth paragraph and really I wonder if 
this possibility that the rules uh, give is not against that the point one six four paragraph. Let's see. Um, it, while I'm looking at that, uh, if um, Regine, sorry for this comment, Rogine, and the rest of the econ is. If if you want to reply to that, Rogine, you can. I'm looking it up right now. This um, uh, okay. There you go, Regine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <clears throat> I just uh, look up uh, the rule as well. Um, so I think this one <clears throat> is a response to a, a question. Um, 3.6.3 is about second whole sample testing, how to report it. Uh, <clears throat> then the reporting part didn't make that connection. So <clears throat> we add here is to make the connection when people do a second whole testing, then they know how to report. Um, so here, just make the link, the reporting for the second whole sample, you can follow the guidance of 3.6.3. Um, so um, I don't know 1.6. Um, Ignacio, could you clarify what's the difference between 3.3.6 and 1.6? Uh, Talking no, about second, second yes. hold. No, it, the 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 reason of my comment is this, uh, Ruin. Uh, the point point one six uh, is about a, a validity of the ISTA certificate. And the four paragraph uh, idea is about that you only can perform a second test, a second test or a, a, the same test after a, that you take a new submitted a, a sample. So um, the question that came to me yesterday is about not the proposal, it's about the point in. 363 and my first question is in when i have to i have to perform a second purity test in a second world working sample so 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 Rojing, I, I think the point that ignacio is getting to is um, for this example, Ignacio, it's intended that this is a second test before you report anything on the orange. So it's like if you did split purity test and you compared the two parts, this is like doing a second purity before you report. But I see what you're saying. I mean, so that, that text could be made clear that it's a second um purity test done before reporting because like you said if you if you've issued the orange you don't get to do a second test uh, the orange has been issued so so i can see why there could be that question maybe that's something to think about with impurity rojing um yes but this is not something new um 3.6.3 .3 is uh talking about two or more whole working sample. So this is 3.6.3 .3 allow uh, second whole sample testing is always there. Um, so the reason could be um, sometimes the testing out of tolerance, uh, the first, then you may do a second whole test or, <clears throat> but um, um, but uh, uh, Steve made it very clear. This is a before you issue a other orange certificate. So whatever the situation previously, 3.6.3 .3 allowed. So this one is to refer to that reporting. 
it just reiterate how to report when you did a second whole sample test, how to report, make that link. If we ask how the 3.6.3 there at the first place, that is a, a different question. I don't think it's related to this proposal. Um, yes, it's true. But I, uh, I could bring this question back to give you uh, a better response um, uh, to the question, at what situation? Could give you some example, at what situation um, you need a second whole test? Um, so the proposal is when you do second whole test, this is the reporting you're supposed to follow 3.6.3. And uh, when you do this test, then I can find a different examples sent back to you. So can I respond to you later um, with some examples when you do the second test, the whole sample test? Is okay. that okay? Yes, yes, yes. I think that this uh, this proposal is clear. Your comment. Uh, I think that there is a, a second point that I uh, raise, and I think that the future is the uh, world change could be give more clear explanation about when it is possible to apply the the idea of point three six three and to, to be more consistent with point one six. Thanks, you, Rui. Okay. Thank you. We still have an open mic from Romina Rodriguez. You want to add something, Romina? Doesn't look like that. Then I will mute you. Thanks. I had a comment. This is David. I'd have a comment I would like to, to make. Go ahead, David. My, if I'm reading it clearly, and it's all predicated on that, so give me a little grace if I'm misunderstanding. Um, 363, isn't it dealing with a retest from the same sample and the reference of 1.6 is referencing when a second sample is taken from the same C lot and retested? Or am I missing the connection? Yeah. You uh, you are right. Um, the second whole sample means from same submitted sample. Okay, so that so that's is a three point six point three. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank, thanks, yeah. Eugene. Yeah. And another open mic from Alejandra Rios. You want to add something, Alejandra? No, I will mute then. Thank you. That's all. Can I have a follow up on Andre? Mm -hmm. A, a follow ahead, up Dave. comment? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the 363 talks about averaging the uh, two purity tests from the same submitted sample. But uh, I believe that 1.6 1, 1. is actually saying if you if you pull a sample and test it, and then you go and pull a new sample from the same C lot and test it, the second sample test results could completely replace the test results from the first sample, and there's no averaging uh, is not required. Is that true? Yeah, I, I think, uh, Dave, um, you made that very clear. Uh, okay. So here we're talking about same submitted sample. The 1.6 is talking about two separate samples. Yeah. So okay. uh, they are not the same thing. Yes. Uh, so the second whole sample, if you go read 3.6.3, it made it a clear. It's the same submitted sample. Um, so uh, I believe this is um, some kind of um, inquiry uh, or audit, um, some lab, um, um, don't know how to report the same submitted sample. The first one uh, is out of tolerance, then they did a second one, 
they don't know should they average them or not. Um, it's clear 3.6.3, but in reporting, no connection. So this pro proposal, it's simply to add that connection there. Um, so yes, when we read clear, it should be uh, very clear. 3.6.3 is the same submitted sample. So that is a distinguish between 1.6 and 3.6.3. So Ignacia, <laughs> I hope that answered your question, but uh, we still can follow up on that. Thanks. Yeah. Ignacio? Oh, are you close to no, again? no. I, I think I I think that uh, we need, in my opinion, more clear, no, more to be more clear in, in in the future text of the of this point that only apply in, for example, in tolerance when the first world sam uh, purity sample is out of tolerance uh, tolerance and the lab need to analyze a second world working sample but in in this case only in my opinion if the ISTA lab uh, perform a second purity test uh, for other reason, uh, reasons I, I think that it, this is not allowed um, so I think the, your suggestion is a 3.6.3 uh, current rule says uh, occasion. There are occasions uh, it's necessary to test a second whole sample. So purity could consider there are occasions and gave some examples such as uh, something such as out of tolerance of the first test or or something. We we might add some examples to explain those occasions. So it will be, if anything need a clarification, it will happen in 3.6.3, not 3.7. Um, this proposal just makes the link there. And also use uh, the language is uh, basically a second whole working sample is uh, similar as a retest, but the retest is not I don't know which one, uh, where the definition made this very cl clear. Uh, we can think of that as well. What is a second whole working sample? What is a second sample? <laughs> um, so in general, working sample refer from the same. But we can, I can bring this back to purity to think about how to make it more clear either uh, add from the same su submitted sample or add some examples. So this is the idea we can think about it in the future to make it more clear on 3.6.3. Is that good enough? Yes, I think that this is the only situation when is the sample, the first world sample is out of tolerance. It's the only the only situation and it's not that the actual text that say mm, different kind of situation if you read quickly okay right. thank you uh Regine thank you. and ignacio uh, there's an open camera from mohammed muzaidul as islam do you want to add something or not if not if not, please close your camera and the, the mic. You oh, want yeah. to add something? No, no, no. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Um, moving on to the next proposal. Um, C.5.1, uh, revised germination method for ATM graviolins. Um, an ISTA method validation study was conducted to approve the addition of a new temperature regime, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, for the germination of ATM graviolins. Uh, the temperature 20 degrees Celsius, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, and 10 to 30 degrees Celsius were compared, combined with top of paper and between paper. 
uh, statistical analysis showed that the germination test performed at 20 degrees Celsius gave, res gave res um, results with good repeatability. In addition, reproducibility was equal to or better than existing methods for this species for this species in the ISTA rules. Uh, and again, this test, this uh, proposal is supported by validation study, which can be found in the preparatory documents on the ISTA website. Um, I did not have any comments on this proposal, so I'm going to just stroll through it. Uh, while if there are comments, you type them into the comments bar or open your mic so that Andreas uh, or, and I can see them. Raising, did you have something? Um, yeah, I do have some concerns and comments. I believe I sent to Pure uh, Germination Committee. Um, so probably I don't need to repeat here. Ernest? Um, I'm sure. Let's see. Is someone from the, um, um, I don't have them on this comments document. I may have skipped them or not added them on my document, Raising. But if someone from the Germination Committee, I'm sure I probably forwarded it to them. Um, Jillian, do you get? Did you guys get those comments? Yes, we did, Rajing. Sorry, I've been on leave, so that's why I haven't replied to you. But I think David has been working on a response to you, and I don't know if David would like to to add anything at the moment. Yes, I'm. I'm. Thank you, Rajing, for the for the questions. Um, and I can I can read those if you wish or not. But um, I mean, there's just two two couple of basic questions. One was. Uh, the multi-lab va validation requires six to eight collaboratory laboratories, and in this study, uh, there were only five that was used. Is that still basically does that still meet the multi-lab validation uh, process? And um, a general comment on that one is is that there, and I, I don't know the details on this, but I have to apologize why there were only uh, five labs. Sometimes it it can boil down to uh, amount of samples used to distribute across laboratories for testing. And then sometimes it could run across uh, familiarity with, with the species being tested by various labs. Um, that's, a, that's a possibility, but I don't, have a, um, I don't have a definite answer on why five labs were used instead of the six to eight. Um, and it, and so I know in a previous validation study that I was involved with, um, I talked to uh, Jean-Louis, the statistics committee chair, and basically looked for their suggestions and approval to move forward. And um, he, he said it was okay to move forward with, with less than the required six to eight collabor collaborating laboratories. This one, I don't know if, if uh, um, the opinion of the stats committee was requested. Go ahead. I'm sorry. David, if I can have yes. something. Yes, please, um, please, Ellie. Uh, in the committee, we agree to um, we agree not to to perform um, a comparative test for adding mm -hmm. one temperature, but only to do a peer validation study method. So, in that case, the number of laboratories allowed for the this study is. Uh, is lower than a, a real comparative test. Thank, thank you. And that, I, I would think I kind of quickly ran through the report, mm -hmm. the technical report, and I did not remember seeing the reason for the limited number of laboratories. So it would probably be a good thing that the type of validation study, in this case, like you mentioned, a peer validation study should be mm -hmm. stated in the um, in that in that study report just to clarify that so that question isn't unanswered okay. so that that would be a good thing to add to that thank you yeah uh, so my comment is uh, uh, is the validation uh, process was well defined in the protocol um, so the uh, germination repeatability reproducibility is a big uh, performance indicator of the method. Um, so when we decide it's a peer 
validation or full validation, uh, that is important to mm -hmm. impact the result. Um, so full validation <coughs> is generally required for germination study. Only there have a special situation. That situation should be justified to decide whether it should be peer study. Um, if the species is rare, if um, there have particular situation, but this species is not rare, it shouldn't be hard to get sufficient number of sample lots and the number of participation. So this is not some species, it's rare. So, um, so the decision germination committee decided to use uh, peer validation rather than full validation study should be justified, not just have a reason, um, must have a justified reason. So I hope the statistical committee or germination committee can uh, gave that a uh, justified reason to justify the result, uh, yes. the study, validation study. Um, and also they, um, uh, even with the five lab, um, the result, uh, the data analysis uh, did not separate by temperature. Uh, they separated by temperature and media. So the direct comparison of the temperature is not provided. So that one maybe can be further uh, validated um, yep. or reanalyzed. Um, the other concern is uh, we keep adding more temperatures to germination method. Um, so um, if we add more temperatures to same crop, uh, they have more options. Um, the variation among lab potentially can be increased. So I, I do believe 20 uh, from the trend, you can see 20 degree might be better than 10 to 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I'm not sure any labs do use 10 to 30 temperature to do this test. If this study can be further validated, um to eliminate one of the temperature so that this method could be really helpful to increase the um uh uniformity of this crop and uh, once again this crop is not a rare crop it's pretty common vegetable crop um so yeah that's just my comments i should yeah. stop there <laughs> <laughs> no they're very good thank you yeah, um, we have two other people who are in the line better. Oh, thank you, Andreas. Um, some of my concerns or questions are already answered by Roshin and um, uh, the, the, during the discussion. But uh, I do not understand why for Anitum gravulans an additional method is included in the rules. But uh, for Grassica, we had a big discussion in 2020. And this method, uh, there was a, a method deleted. And further, in the validation study, there was already pointed out in the summary that uh, this temperature will be an, an, an additional method. But this, uh, I cannot, um, yeah, I cannot understand why there is a differentiation between the, the two species. Thank you. Uh, does anybody want to answer on that, Gillian? Hi, thanks to Rujing and um, Berta for your comments. Um, I think if we look back over previous um, germination method validation studies, when the species has already been in the ISTA rules, we have often done a peer um, method validation study, and this is really just to cut down on, on the work. Um, Sylvie may want to talk about the interactions that um, Rojing mentioned. I, I don't have that information with me at the moment. Um, I think the, the other thing is um, that when this method validation first went in, it went in differently, where we were hoping to only add the 20 degrees Celsius and remove the other um, temperatures. However, 
the ECOM were keen for us not to be removing the temperatures. And it's a very difficult situation when you're looking at the results and the statistics committee can correct me here, but there's no magic number for accepting um, temperatures and when you with you know when you, you take them out. So it's a, there's a real challenge for the germination committee and we really need the help of our our statistics committee and, and, and others to to help us with this and, and how we actually develop when we remove temperatures or when mm -hmm. we just put them in as additional. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Gillian. Janine, your mic is open as well. Okay, it's closed. Thank you. Um, Ernest, that looks like oh, you can continue. Okay, sounds good. Uh, it's really important, you guys, that um, um, these some of these comments are really, all of these comments are really good. Um, you make sure that you send those to me immediately following this meeting because I will have to get my comments document out to the to the um, the TCOM chairs so that they can respond to them and, and they'll need enough time to do that. So as soon as uh, this meeting is over, if you could start emailing me uh, the comments that you asked so I can get them on the on the comment sheet and get those to the um, to the chairs for response. The next proposal, um, C.5.2, additional guidance on conducting a tetrazoleum test at the end of a germination test. This proposal gives clarification that species listed in table 5A can have a tetrazoleum test conducted to determine the viability of fresh ungerminated seeds at the germination test. This is uh, different to using table 6A to carry out the tetrazoleum test and report this on an orange international certificate seed lot. Um, this proposal was developed by the germ committee and approved by the germination and the TZ committees. I did receive a comment on this proposal um, and the comment was, will the germ germination committee uh, consider adding a reference uh, to the ISTA working sheet on tetrazoleum testing uh, to provide methodological guidance for those species not listed in Table 6A. Again, would the germination committee um, consider adding a reference to the ISTA working sheets on tetrazoleum testing to provide methodological guidance for those species not listed in Table 6A? So, Jillian, if you want to respond to that. Hey, yeah, thank you for to whoever sent that in. I think all we can do at this stage is maybe discuss with the, the chair and the members of the Tetrazoleum Committee and look, you know, to take this forward perhaps next year. Thank you. David? Yes, I would I would like to add a very good, very good point. Um, but um, as probably some of you know that I'm also a member of AOSA and AOSA has a very uh, excellent tetrazoleum testing handbook for hundreds of species. And so I would like to reference anyone that's looking for more information on conducting a TZ test on species not listed uh, in the AOSA documents that you can use. You know, you can use these as somewhat of a guide, but part of it is, I, and I agree with the problem, it, it is a, it is a, kind of a void that needs to be filled, but it's a void that's uh, very time consuming and takes a lot of uh, a lot of effort and dedication. But, you know, in, in a sense, we're fortunate in that the the uh, AOSA SCST organization has put together an excellent TZ working handbook um, that gives you all the instructions and the basic information for conducting a TZ test. Um, on these species that are not listed. So um, like Jillian said, we'll be bringing this back to the group for more discussion, but that would be an excellent way of referencing other materials. Dave is more than Dave. just a member. He's the president of AOSA, <laughs> just so that everyone knows that. So so, so th thank you for that um, segue into AOSA, David. But as Mr. President, I should remind everybody that there are some extensive Tetrazoleum handbooks and worksheets available 
but also that you can't issue an Orange International certificate if the species or crop isn't listed in Table 2C. So, it, it, so um, I, I'm not quite sure if people are wanting to do tetrazoleum on species that aren't listed, but then there's also the um, there's the working group from Gil Weibel where he's working on wild species where they are coming up and listing and providing other methodologies for species not listed in the in the ISTA rules. But don't forget that you can't issue an orange blue or or or, or, or um, the orange or blue certificates if the species is not le listed in Table Two C. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, Ernest. I think. You can continue now. Okay. Moving on to C.5.3, the addition of information on pre-chilling temperatures. Uh, this proposal gives clarification that during pre-chilling, the temperature prescribed for pre-chilling should be measured from on or in the substrate. From on or in the substrate. Uh, this is a uh, approved and developed by the um, germination committee. Um, I did not receive any comments on this proposal, so we'll give a few seconds for uh, you to open your mics or type them into the chat box. I don't see any open mic. Nope. All right. Just moving going on. Moving on. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm Excellent. late. But I I, <laughs> I would have a comment. Um, the problem uh, we got uh, with the pre-chilling uh, temperature is that auditors want to have uh, the tolerance of two degrees up and down. So if you have ten degrees uh, as pre-chill temperature, it's not accepted because uh, you could have 11 uh, degree measured and that would not be within this uh, given space for pre-chilling, five to 10 degree. And I thought uh, this would uh, give the solution that in future, it would be uh, permitted to uh, to have a 10 degree pre-chill temperature, which I think is perfectly good. But we had to change to 8 degree because of these tolerances. And I would, uh, I talked with uh, Andrea, and she is in the germination uh, committee about that and she said no sorry this is not meant in this direction but i would hope that in future this would be fixed uh, by the germination committee um jillian do i see this jillian. right that it's not mentioned that's this yeah, this, this proposal is just to make it clear that when you're measuring the the pre-chilling temperature, so when, you know, that you are using, you're putting the, the thermometer in, you're measuring the temperature from within the substrate. So that is what this rule proposal is about. Um, Axel, what you say about the 5 to 10, um, you know, the temperature is 5 to 10, it's not 5 to 10 plus or minus two. So, you know, you're right. correct there. All I can do is, mm -hmm. is discuss that further with the germination committee. And I, we have over the years discussed it several times, but we've always stuck with the five to 10. Um, but we can, we can discuss it again, if that would be useful. Yeah, I, I like to jump in too, um, Axel, according to with your concern is that in ISTA rules 5623, the bottom of that section that clearly states pre-chilling temp is 5 to 10 degrees C is prescribed. This means the allowed temperature range is 5 to 10 C and not 5 plus or minus 2 to 10 plus or minus 2 C. Does that answer your question about? Yes, but that means that you can't use 5 degree, that you can't use 10 degrees. 
And if you have a perfect climate, uh, uh, then you have then you have to say six degree to nine degree and not five to ten, because you have to have a little bit tolerance. I I understand you know, what what Axel is saying because we have here five to ten degrees, but the tolerance is plus minus minus two. So actually, if you have five, you could have three in reality. And if you have 10, you could have 12 in reality. But it seems to be that there is a discrepancy in understanding about um, the, the plus minus the here. So um, is this five to 10, including this tolerance? Or is the tolerance on top of it? That needs to may, be made clear, right, Axel? I would say it is an ecological disaster <laughs> to cool with eight degree to be forced with the auditors to be forced to, de, um, to cool at eight degree if 10 degrees are sufficient. And I can't understand that ISTA is, uh, is proposing this and and, and don't uh, want to reject it so thank you that was my comment and i would be very well according to 563 there, there is no tolerance there is no tolerance applied to the pre-chill temperature it's either it's the max is 10 the limit the low is five there is no plus or minus two that seems to be clearly stated in 5623 to me Yes, but it makes no sense. You have <laughs> well, that's another issue. <laughs> in fog cooling, in, in pre chilling, you have uh, you are free in your choice. If you use a six, seven, eight, or nine degree, you are very free. But you have to have the temperatures uh, from from the table five A. There you have to be precise, and these are measured uh, with the tolerances. So, so it makes no sense at all. Uh, thank you. Sounds like a good project. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Uh, I, I see your your point and your your carbon to footprint, Axel, and on that. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's true. There need maybe in future there needs to be clarifications, and if we say five to ten, and there is a measure. And it's a measurement of uh, measurement error of plus minus two degrees allowed. Then 12, in my opinion, if you put it at 10, it could be 12. And if you put it at five, it could be three. Um, so I see the measurement error on top of this five to 10. So that is that is what you what what needs to be clear. And I think Gillian, that is what Axel else? is going as well. Yeah, thanks for that. We we have discussed it many times, and most I think what laboratories tend to do now is maybe set it between seven and eight, so that they are within the tolerance. But the substrate temperature allowed is between five and and ten. But I, I just want to be clear that on this actual proposal it wasn't about the five to 10. It was just really about where the temperature is measured from to make it clear that it is within um, the in on or in the substrate. Thank you. Yes. Based yeah. on this proposal, that's not going to change anything. Uh, uh, this proposal is not going to change the five to 10 degree issue that we have. Um, so moving on to Let's the next on. proposal, because we are running running short on time. Um, C.5.4, the addition of, seed, um, of seedling evaluation group into table 5A. Uh, this proposal is to add the seedling evaluation group to uh, table 5A, parts 1, 2, and 3. This should be beneficial to seed analysts and ensure that the correct seedling evaluation group is used. This is helpful when the species have had, has had a change in the rules, uh, but the ISTA handbook on seedling evaluation has not been updated. 
Uh, there are three appendices that are also on the ISTA website that you can view that shows the changes in detail uh, for this proposal. So I'm going to stroll through here um, while you type any comments or responses into your box because I did not receive any for this proposal. If you guys have not had an opportunity to review this proposal, I, I think um, uh, Eric this section, is opening his mic there. Okay. Yes, the so section here is a very good deal. Go ahead, Eric. Was, yeah, there was one question of the Netherlands, uh, of uh, the, is the meeting in the Netherlands, about the uh, uh, handbook is the guideline and the rules are the rules. Is the, the group now a rule? It, I'm sorry, you said it's the it's the group now in I I didn't catch that. Yeah, the groups are, are the groups in the rules. It's a handbook then also a part of the rules. Gillian, did you want? I would um, guess that because we are putting it into the rule we, into the rules, we are saying that the seedling evaluation group is now the rules. Yeah, I mentioned that also. I think that's... Yeah, that 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 would be my understanding and. As Ernest has said, we're hoping that this will make it more straightforward and easier for seed analysts so that they are quite clear of how they are carrying out the seedling evaluation. And, but any and, other comments from the germination committee? Yeah, I, I have a comment because just, just like you mentioned then, so if, if this proposal passes, seedling evaluation groups are now included in the rules and it'll take a vote of the membership whenever a uh, change to a seedling or a, a species whenever the seedling evaluation group, which is going to be probably very rare, but if it is decided that it's going to be moved to a different seedling evaluation group, then it'll take the vote of the membership uh, now instead of just the vote of the the germ TCOM. Would that be true? That's the way I would see it. Um, I, I would like to hear Steve's opinion on that, but um, but because we're we're putting this into the rules now. Um, mm -hmm. I think we need the, the, the actual membership to vote on any changes that are going to be put forward to make changes to that. Um, Correct. <clears throat> so, so Ernest, uh, in response to your question, um, putting these in, in, the, in the rules tables means that if you are going to change them in the handbooks or elsewhere, the membership has to vote on it. Uh, at the moment, I see them as um, extra information for the analyst to not have to look things up in the handbook but be in the rules but that and that was why I think the germination committee suggested it but, um, but uh, David's correct that in future if there is a decision to move the, um, the the information you would have to vote on it in a rules session okay the most Yannick, recent... your mic is open as well uh, yes uh, I just wanted to mention something in regards to um, the point of if this is part of the rules or not. I mean, this is kind of like how we have different languages as well. I mean, if there is a discrepancy between the whatever German and the uh, English version, uh, the English version takes precedent over the German version because the English version is the original version. Same with the, I would assume the same with the handbook is that if the rules and the handbook have a discrepancy, the rules take precedent over the uh, handbook. I just want to exactly. mention that on the side. A handbook could also be always outdated in a way and overruled by the rules. That's true. Yes. In in this case, the handbook is referencing directly the um, uh, the rules is referencing directly the handbook, though. So again, those changes will go will go hand in hand. Yeah. So it will hmm. never be any uh, difference because whatever the handbook says, the rules allows. Yeah. All right. I see um, no other raised hands, Ernest, and we can go on. Okay, sounds good. So the next uh, proposal, uh, Chapter 7, C.7.1, the addition of an optical filtration method for the detection um, of the species <laughs> in Medicago sativa uh, for in these other species. Uh, proposal gives the option of a, to use a sieve 
with filtered paper or an equivalent nematode permeable container for method methods in 7-031. Specifically, the proposal recommends the optional use of a non-woven plant growth bag for filtration to detect um, the species in Medicago sativa and the detection in other species of seed. Um, a supplementary MVR study shows that this single-use nematode permeable container is equivalent to the current method and allows for decreased risk for cross-contamination. Uh, this proposal is supported by validation method that can be found on the ISTA in, in the on the ISTA website in the preparatory documents. Uh, it was uh, submitted and, and approved by the Seed Health Committee. I'll stroll through through this proposal. I did not receive any comments on this proposal. Andreas, do you have anything? I don't see any open mics. Okay. So moving to the um, next proposal, um, C.8.1, uh, new method for P, uh, identification and verification of varieties on testing genetic purity by means of DNA-based techniques are being used extensively in, mo in many laboratories nowadays. In 2017, the first DNA method uh, was included in the rules for testing wheat. Uh, the interest uh, for including such a uh, technical procedure has increased over time. The Variety Committee proposed the inclusion of a DNA-based test for testing of P varieties. Uh, this proposal is supported by a validation study uh, and was uh, um, developed and approved by the ISTA Variety uh, Committee. Uh, I did receive um, one comment for this proposal and the next proposal. The comment was the same for both. Um, and the comment was um, variety testing uh, as used in these two uh, proposals uh, should be cultivar testing. The word variety is often used in many places where cultivar should be used instead. Uh, in this instance, however, variety is a, tastic, a taxonomic rank that is now included in the ISTA list for some species. The new text being added should be cultivar since we don't have any varieties of pisum uh, on the stabilized list. Um, so if the variety committee would want to um, wants to respond to that comment, um, basically they're just uh, this comment was just about changing the word variety uh, in this section uh, to cultivar um, yeah. to, 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 to be in line with the cultivar uh, the stabilized list. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Hi, I'm yeah. um, Okay. I. We should uh, see the table which is referred to this comment. I'm not sure about that. Uh, for for me in Argentina, and I, I think for many people at the variety committee, cultivar and variety are synonymous. But uh, okay, I can discuss this with, uh, within the committee and see the reference uh, this person raised and check if it's applicable to change the word variety for cultivar. I think it would not be a problem for us. Eddie, you have opened your mic as well. Yes, uh, I just want to uh, mention that um, in all the other international organizations, or UPOF and uh, OECD, they use variety, not cultivar. So I think for consistency, we should stick uh, with variety. Okay, Thank you. And Anna. Uh, and I will check that out. Perfect. I think that clears all the questions, Ernest. All your questions you received. You're muted, Ernest. Thank you, Andreas. And I didn't receive any questions other than, than, the, than that question. So I'll move forward. Perfect.
So the next proposal is C.8.2, uh, new method for Venus Sativa. Again, that comment from the last uh, proposal was the same for this one. Um, so there's no need to rehash that one. If anyone else has uh, any additional comments, go ahead and type those in or open your mic now so that you can be recognized. I see no questions here, Ernest. Okay. So we'll move on to the next proposal as soon as uh, we get there. Uh, so the next proposal is um, C.9.1, the addition of bullets in 9.2.7 and 9.3.2.7 to improve clarity. Uh, the current version of this section was proposed last year and was accepted, however, a missing bullet made the new addition seem as if it only referred to pelleted seed. Uh, this was not the intent of the proposal. This new proposal corrects that issue. I did not receive any comments on this proposal, so we'll wait for a few seconds to see if anyone has anything to say. Don't see anybody's opening the mic no nope. okay and uh this next section c.19.1 a new acronym in the object uh the acronym tp for trait purity is introduced it was pointed out during the discussion uh the t that tp is used in chapter five to indicate top of paper however the committee agrees that the use of TP for trait purity in the context of chapter 19 runs a very small risk of ambiguity and that the benefit of using it of using TP outweighs the risk. In cases where ambigu ambigu uh, it's ambiguous, ambiguous um, trait purity should be used uh, in full and spelled out. Uh, the following proposal has been developed and approved by the ISTA GMO committee. Uh, I did receive a comment that um, um, about using TP in the in the confusion that it might cause. Uh, cause um, I think that the gray box explains it uh, well, though, so I didn't add that comment uh, to my comment sheet. If anyone wants to um, has an additional comment, uh, if you can go ahead and open your mics or uh, type it into the chat box. The only other comment I received on this proposal was a very positive comment, um, um, basically congratulating the TCOM for 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 undertaking this project uh, as a, as a much needed um, uh, as something that needed to be done. Hmm. I've got a question in the chat box uh, from the official Denmark laboratory. Are the new definitions in C nineteen point one? brackets 19.2.9 change to 19.2.20 brackets are solely clarifications to the requirements on GMO testing are they compliance to the URL GMFF or from 2015 on minimal performance requirements definition of minimal performance requirements for analytical methods of GMO testing, European network of GMO laboratories. Um, maybe you can see that one as well. Um, I think the chat box is open. Oh, it was to the organizers. Um, I could, I could run that to everybody. And I think that is talking about this section here. Um, am I right about that? Let's see. No. That is talking about 
Sigin, do you want uh, that came from Denmark, Sigin Balgrind? Do you want to to clarify that in in talking? Uh, I just turned my mic on. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, this is actually it's not a question from from us here. It's a question from a specific laboratory in in Denmark, the official laboratory who do uh, GMO testing and they do it accordingly to an EU document from 2015 which very much clarifies uh, the requirements on GMO testings so they were just in doubt if these clarifications um, on the on the new rules uh, if they uh, in any way would change what is already a requirement on GMO, GMO testing so it was only in doubt if if uh, these new clarification would change anything because they are already uh, using these uh, EU RL requirements. So it, it was just to clarify. Okay. Can you hear me? This yeah, is yes. Enrico. Please go yes. ahead. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, oh, well, actually, um i think i just see now the comment so it may require some thinking but and uh, consultation perhaps with uh, my colleagues uh, in the committee but uh, uh, our aim was just to clarify what was already there and was not to change any uh, underlying uh, concept that we had for gmo testing it was just to be more clear and more precise on the terms um, mm. regarding the requirement uh, as minimal performance requirement for methods uh, we haven't actually ever uh, given specific requirements to methods that have uh, uh, that are used by ISTA laboratories and this actually, it is uh, uh, it is uh, uh, something that we are working on. Uh, I mean, mean, giving more precise requirements in the handbook. Okay, so we are working on that part, but really, I cannot say that something has changed. Okay, so these are just general definition that uh, should be more clear. Okay, I don't Thank know if, uh, if this is, uh, is enough, <laughs> but uh, I just see I, the comment now and it is, uh, it is something that uh, needs to be thought more, more deeply probably. Yeah. I, I, I think it's quite enough. Uh, I, I guess their concern was just if there were some changes to the rules because they weren't quite sure if it was a change or if it was no. just a clarification. Yeah. So yeah. by now they are using the minimal performance requirement definitions from EU yeah. okay. and, and that should be sufficient. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Yes, so thank you sure. very much. Sure. Thank you. Ernest, I think we can continue then. Okay, so this was actually the last proposal for, for this year. That was number 12. Um, the next step is, um, again, I wasn't able to kind of flip back and forth between my screens, so I, haven't, I, I was not able to capture all of the comments that came in today. It's extremely important if you made a comment that you go ahead and send that comment to me immediately so that I can compile those comments and send them to the TCOMs for them to respond to. Uh, I'm going to give them approximately a week to respond to them so that I can have those on the website for you to be able to view before uh, the OGM. Uh, so um, again, if you made a comment, send that to me immediately. Uh, then I'll send them to the, the, the TCOM chairs so that they can um, uh, work with their teams to get those comments answered uh, or responded to, and then we'll post those on the website. Um, and that's all I have, Andreas. Thank you very much, Ernest, on that. And um, we are not too bad. We had rude sessions which we started on time and overrun by 10 minutes. So um, 
that is not too bad today due to the point that we had the issue uh, of um, uh, people not being able to use the link or the the broken link which was um, which was um, previously sent out and I excuse again for that for that issue I hope everybody who wanted to join could join um, uh, maybe to mention as well that um, we have recorded that session and it will be online on the YouTube channel for those who were not able to join and I know that a few people asked me before if that is the case so that is um, um, for them uh, fine and for everybody who would like to listen again they can do as well in total we had around 100 people uh, we were always about 60 to 70 on uh, but uh, people left and came on, so we are we're probably around 100 in total who were here. Um, and I would like to hand over to uh, Steve and Keshavulu for the last words on that um, session. So thank, thanks very much, Andreas uh, um, and, uh, and Ernest for, for presenting that and getting us through that in, in the shorter and, and good time. So um, I, I would just like to remind everybody that the the voting for the rules session um, will take place in Cairo at the the OGM, uh, and that um, Ernest will also have an opportunity, and you will have an opportunity for the people there to to participate and discuss more with people. But it's good to make sure that you feed those comments through to Ernest as soon as you can as well so that other people that can't be there can also see the document um, online. Um, uh, for those of you that know already is that um, I'm not able to travel to, to Cairo but uh, Kashavulu will be standing in for me in, in different uh, positions with, within the uh, ordinary general meeting and uh, just uh, hand over to Kashavulu to to give a, a final word today. Thanks very much, uh, Ernest, and to everybody else in the technical committees who have contributed to those rules proposals and again had a very good discussion both online and by email about those. That just adds to the robustness of the ISTA rules and I very much appreciate all the effort that everybody in ISTA is doing to to make them useful for everybody worldwide. Thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone so thanks uh, uh, steve uh, the thanks uh, andreas for the the perfect i think so the probably i think as you said so we are very much maybe just the 15 minutes more we have taken uh, then so this this would go to the uh, i would i would uh, really appreciate the earnest uh, and this and that for the timely completion and uh, timely making the his making his presentation it was uh, really and then thanks for his uh, uh, efforts for making this presentation the collecting the information and then the the clarifications um, the uh, clarification and then uh, again the taking the um, uh, and then the taking the feedback from the TCOMs and then of course as uh, uh, Steve said so these the contributions from the uh, TCOMs and then TCOMs so, so really it is very much appreciated so without the home and then so this would have not been a, like uh, the these the rules may not be the rule changes would not be possible so thank you so much so so probably we will be uh, yeah so see each other and that we will try to revert back to the the face to face meeting from this uh, this congress and then so let us see that most of us will be uh, seeing you in person and then and then we, we will be having the face to face interaction in the egypt in the uh, in the next the next month so that is in the so between the uh, 7 to 11th of the may so thank you thank thank you so once again everyone for the participating and thanks for your time so thanks uh, steve and then over to andreas yeah, i can only close this session and um, thank you again and excuse again for the for the the problems with the link um and uh, um, I'm happy that it worked out finally uh, 20 minutes later that everybody who
could want, wanted to join could join. Um, if you have any further questions to that, please contact Ernest, send your messages, as he said. But I would like to close the meeting and um, uh, say goodbye. If you want to open all your cameras, um, we can wave our wave goodbye and um, and um, see each other at least um, at one point. Ciao. Ciao. Take care. Bye bye. Ciao. And bye -bye. hope to see most of you bye -bye. in in Cairo. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 This conference will now be recorded.